This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come together as the people of God, whether we're inside or in our cars, we're here to worship our God and King, to encourage each other as we seek perfection in love, faith, and righteousness, to sing and laugh and revel in all the blessings that God lavishes upon us, to take comfort in each other, in our sorrows, to alleviate the pain and suffering that troubles each other's souls, and to seek the face of God. Find rest in the arms of Jesus. Our opening hymn is number 545, The Church's One Foundation. I understand that it's wrong in the bulletin, so it should be 545. I don't know if the people in the cars have books out there or not. Oh well. Let's stand and sing. The church is one foundation. Is Jesus Christ her Lord? She is His new creation by water and the Word. From heaven He came and sought her to be His holy bride. With His own blood He bought her, and for her life He died. Elect from every nation, yet one or all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food. And to one hope she presses with Yet she on earth has union with God the three in one. And mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one. Oh, happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace that we, like them the meek and lowly, on high. Psalms 91, if you will follow along, uh, it should be on page 810. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My, my refuge and, and my fortress. fortress my God in whom I trust. For the Lord will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence and will cover you with his pinions. Under, Under the Lord's wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your habitation, no evil shall befall you. No, no scourge come near your tent. tent. For God will give his angels <clears throat> charge over you to guard you in all your ways. They, they will bear you up on their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because they cleave to me in love, I will deliver them. I will protect them because they know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. 
I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will satisfy them with long life and show them my salvation. The next hymn is How Great Thou Art. I heard it's number 77. Is that correct? Number 77, How Great Thou Art. Let's stand and sing. <coughs> Faith we profess in the Apostles' Creed, it's found on page 881 of the hymnal. 
Let us join in this historic confession of our faith. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us join in our prayer of confession as found on page 8 of the hymnal. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. As a forgiven people, we change signs of peace, so I guess just wave at somebody or whatever you're going to do. <laughs> Honk your horn out there or something, I don't know. Our next hymn. It's Wayfaring Stranger. The uh, lyrics are printed in your bulletin. I'm just a... Let me find the key. I'm just a poor... Wayfair and stranger, I'm traveling through this world of woe, but there's no sin, this toil or danger in that bright world.
just a going over Jordan. I'm just a going over home. Uh, the children come forward for today's children's message. Or you can stay there, that's fine. <laughs> One of the words that's going to be used, or depending on the translation of, of our scripture today, is the word abide. Abide is one of those church words. You don't hear it as in, in everyday conversation. It's not like people use it every day. But the, it's, it, and then one of the problems that we do have in the church is sometimes we use these terms that we really can't, really don't relate to the people outside the church. That you, you get you. They don't know what communion is. They don't know what abide means. They don't know what some of these words mean, so we have to explain it to them. And abide means to live with. You, when, you're, when you abide with someone, you live with someone. You abide with your family. You abide in, in the, whatever town you, you, you live in, whether it's Kibble County or whatever. So I know some of you are in Nice and in, in, in our county, but, <laughs> but that's where you abide. That's, that's where you live. And um, in our Old Testament to le lesson today, it talks about uh, Solomon, who's building the temple for the uh, for the people, and he's dedicating the temple. And God promises to abide with the people of Israel, to abide, abide among them, to live among them. And God lives among us. God lives with us all the time. God wants to be part of your life, to share with you, because you're special, because God loves you, and He wants to 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 know you, and He wants to be with you every step of the way. So when God, we say that God abides with you, God lives with you every moment so that he can give and bless you every moment of your life. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for your love for us. Help us to always be mindful of your grace. We ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Now I've been doing a bunch of silly songs. And one of the silly, there's a, there's a group out there called the Apologetics. And what they do is they take modern songs, pop songs, uh, maybe not modern pop, but they take, they take pop songs and they put in Christian lyrics to them. And so this one is uh, I'm a Redeemer, which it goes to the tune of I'm a Believer by the Monkeys. I thought God was only Jewish fairy tale. Boy, meant for someone else with much more faith. All my doubts oppressed me. That's the way it stayed Till a voice said, honey, call my name Then I got his grace Now I'm a receiver God replaced The doubt in my mind I'm in love Oh, I'm a receiver Got the redeemer in my life I thought God was more impressed with giving me The best I got What's the use in striding All your debt is paid It's through Jesus Christ That you are saved Then I got his grace Now I'm a receiver Got a place A palace on high Up above Oh I'm a receiver I'm gonna be there when I die God is grace. Now I'm a receiver. Mama said, I'm out of my mind. I've been touched. Oh, I'm a receiver. Got the Redeemer in my life. I know the normal song fades out, but you can't do a fade in life. <laughs> Fades don't work very well in live performances. We come to our time of offering. The return, a part of the portion of what we've been granted and the gifts that we've been given to the work of God's work, people. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of all good and perfect gifts, we thank you for blessing upon blessing you lavish so generously upon us. Give us generous hearts that the resources you've given us may be used to build your kingdom upon this earth. Amen. Listening to a radio station where the host of heaven sings. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. 
video on. If you want to feel those good vibrations coming from the joy that the poor can bring, get in touch with God. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. And listen to the music in the air. Turn your radio on. Turn your lights down low and listen to the master's radio. Get in touch with God. Turn your radio on. Don't you know that everybody has a radio receiver? All you gotta do is listen to the call. Turn your radio on. Turn your radio on. If you listen in, then you'll be a believer. Turn your radio on and listen to the music in the air. Turn your radio on and heaven's glory, glory shed. Turn your lights down low and listen to the master's radio. Get in touch with God. Turn your radio on. The Old Testament reading for today is found in 1 Kings 6, 11 through 13. The word of the Lord came to Solomon. As for this temple you are building, if you follow my decrees, observe my laws and keep all my commands and obey them, I will fulfill through you the promise I gave to David your father. And I will live among the Israelites and will not abandon my people Israel. The New Testament reading is from 1 John 2 and it's 28 and 29. And now, dear children, continue in him so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be Thank to God. God. I uh, recently uh, had gotten to a discussion with my nephew, and uh, it forced me to, 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 to look at uh, look at my family records, look at my family tree, uh, and, and I'm very fortunate in that I, I know a lot about my family tree. I, I have some genealogists in the family, and they've done a lot of research and put together the, the family tree, so I know a lot about them, and, and the discussion I was having centered around the Cherokee side of my family. Now, the interesting thing about looking at the, the Cherokee records, there's two things about the Cherokee records. First of all, there's no women listed. They just didn't keep track of the females. The, you, you go through these records and you see these entire families, and there's not a single female in all these families. Uh, it's with, no wonder they went extinct, you know? It's like... <laughs> But uh, no, I, I ran to a, a grandmother, and the only record we have of her is she's the daughter of the daughter of Raven. Don't have her name. She's just the daughter of the daughter of Raven. So that's that's the only record we got. So that's that's one thing about the going the difficulty of going through the Cherokee records. The other one is that direct bloodlines are not that important to the Cherokee. The, the unless unless you were. Uh, the, the, the child of a famous chief or a famous warrior or something like that, that the, I, there was not this, this distinction between direct bloodlines within the tribe. It was all kind of mixed together. The grandfather, turns out, it wasn't actually a, 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 an indication of a bloodline relationship. It was more of an age relationship. 
Every all the elders of the of the of the uh, the tribe were referred to as grandfather. And this isn't true just in the Cherokee. It's also with a lot of the Native American tribes. So so it was more of of, of the relationship between the elders in the tribe and those that were younger in the tribe. Brother was a term that was used for someone that was roughly your own age. Uh, very, you know, we know the word te Texas, Tejas, comes from an Indian word meaning friend or ally. Well, the, the, it also means brother. <laughs> and so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, uh, thing. And then anyone who was child was somebody who was younger than you. And the idea that, that, that they referred to someone as a child didn't and necessarily, like I said, didn't imply a blood relationship, but a responsibility. The children of the tribe were, the, were to be cared for. They were to be provided for. They were to be taught. They were to be trained. They were to be brought up. Now, in this letter, John reflects this idea many times. John is 95 years old. He's... he's, he's uh, for that day and age, he would be an extremely old man. Uh, you think about the, the life expectancy was probably in the 40s. It didn't mean that people didn't grow very, very old. It's just that fewer did in, in our society. So John is in his late 90s, and he's probably the same age as the uh, three times great-grandfathers of the, of the people, that are, the youth that are surrounding him. And in a, it was both a Greek and a Jewish tradition that the, that the idea was that the, uh, the older you got, the wiser you got. And so you turn to, to the elders, you respect the elders because of their experience, because of their wisdom. Now, there's, there's a joke that, you know, with age comes wisdom, sometimes age comes stack. So, you know, that there are people who that doesn't necessarily fall through. But, but, but John very much feels this responsibility toward the people that he's writing. And he refers to them as his dear children. In fact, in this letter, he uses the phrase dear children nine times. Five of them are in this chapter alone. And it shows the relationship that John has, this care that he has, this grandfatherly care that he has for the people around him. John is not living his life for himself. John is living his life for this people that he calls his dear children. And he wants for them what a grandfather would want. He wants them to prosper. He wants them to be happy. He wants them to find success. He sat at the feet of Jesus and heard these words, I've come to bring you life and life abundant. And that's what John wants for the people to whom he's writing. Jesus' master lived and died and was resurrected to give them that joyful, abundant life. He wants each one of them to live lives filled with joy. And so he wants he, these, these people to, to love each other, to get along, to be brothers and sisters, just like you want your own kids and your own family to get along. Didn't have to worry that, that Ben was an only child. <laughs> I mean, was the only child. But, but you want your kids to get along. You want your kids to be happy with each other, to support each other for the rest of their lives. You want to enjoy life as a family. You want them to find that companion to walk the, the journey of life with, that, that, that husband or wife that you commit to, to share that, 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 that adventure of living, that adventure of of raising children, and the adventure of just, just growing old together and having all those common experiences. John writes, and now, dear children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed at his coming. God, John knows that God is always there. He's omnipresent. Omnipresent means he's at all places and all times. Like I was telling you, the, the, the church words, omnipresent is one of those. That, that's not really a church word, but it's only one you hear in church. God is there in moments of joy, and love, success, when things are going well. God is always there in times and moments, and sorrow and pain, when things aren't going so good. 
God is also omniscient. Omniscient means he knows all things. He knows what we're going through. One thing that I learned long ago that I never am to say, you will not hear me say, is I know what you're going through. Because the reality is, I don't. Your experience is your experience. I may have been in a similar situation. I may have been in situations where uh, similar things happen. But part of not that is not just my experience, but it also how I react to that is based on my previous experience. And how you react and how you respond to that is also going to be part of your experience. Even if identical situation, you are your own person. And to, to say something like, I know what you're going through, is to feel that, that sin of pride that changes that focus from what you're going through to what I know, to what my experience is. But God is different. He does truly know what you're going through. God is different because He feels every pain that you feel. He feels every joy that you feel. Whatever you are going through, God is so in touch with you. He is omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's there every moment knowing what you're going through. We say that God is omnipresent and omniscient, and that's true. And while our small mortal minds and hearts cannot experience what this truly means, God truly does abide with you, truly lives with you. Now, what, 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 what that, I know that's well and good to know that God is with us. That's what, that's what the Old Testament lesson is about. That's what Solomon, what God is telling Solomon in the Old Testament lesson. But what John, John is instructing his children, these beloved children that he wants, that he's on their side, he wants them to live the good life. What John instructs for us is for us to abide with God. Not, 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 God lives with us all the time, but, but for us to, to understand and to live in God's presence. To live knowing that God is with us and watching us and living the life that God wants us to live. Matthew 13, Jesus tells the parable of the sower. Now this is one of our more familiar uh, uh, parables. Jesus tells the story of a, man, of a sower, a farmer who goes out to sow uh, grain and some of the seed falls on the path, the rocky path. And the birds come and pick up the seed, and it never grows. And some of it falls among the, the rocks by the side of the road. And they sprout for a little while, but because they can't get any roots, they wither and die. Some of them falls among the weeds, and the weeds choke them out. And some of it falls on good ground, and it produces 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Now this is one of those parables that uh, Jesus tells and then the, later on the disciples are, go to him and say, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so Jesus explains to him, the seed is the word of God. The one who sows the seed preaches the word of God. The seed that falls on the path is where people just, they don't care. They don't want to listen to it. They just, you know, bounces right off. And the devil comes and plucks it away. The, 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 the seed that falls among, the, among the, the rocky ground is where people get really enthusiastic. They hear about it, and boy, golly, they're, they're all fired up for it. But they don't take the time to grow any roots. They don't take the time for, that, for that, that, that faith to have any depth in their souls and in their lives. And so it withers and dies. One of the um, uh, pat chaplains at Trinity University, he said that uh, they tried in the 60s to have a series of, of rock worship services. And he said it, it became the seed among the stones. There was no depth to it. It was a religious pep rally every Sunday. That wasn't the way to go. Now, though the seed among the thorns is, of course, is where the cares and the troubles of the world come in. And a lot of us find ourselves sometimes that seed among the thorns. It happens to all of us. It happens. It's part of our, our, our daily life. We get caught up in what's going on around us. We worry about work. We worry about family. We're worried about the virus. We're worried about our economy. We're worried about a whole lot of things. And so the cares of the world come and they, 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 for, let us, they, they lead us to forget 
that we need to live and abide with God, that God is with us through all of this and we are not alone. And, and, and God knows this and God forgives us and that's, that's the reason we have the cross. For, 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 for him to understand that we are who we are. That sometimes we are that seed among the thrones, thorns. And we need to, to be that seed that's good, good soil. For us to abide with God is to listen for that word every moment of every day and follow God's call on our life. And God has a call for you. He has set out a path before you that He knows will bring you joy, that will bring you peace, that will bring you happiness, that will bring you that life abundant, that satisfaction that brings you that special joy. Whatever you do, do it for God. Whatever situation you find yourself in, be on, be on God's team. Abide with Him. Live with Him. Listen to what He says. Be the best version of yourself that you can be. That God created you to be. God calls you to be a teacher. Be the best teacher you can be. If God calls you to be an auto mechanic, be the best auto mechanic you can be. If God calls you to wait tables, be the best waiter you can be. Whatever the task is, do it well. So as John says, that you may be confident and unashamed at his coming. Another point that John makes is that abiding with God leads you to become a righteous person. Living with God instills within you those values of honesty, of hope, of cheerfulness, of, 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 of humility. Those, those, those things that, that if you're living with God and you're abiding with God will naturally come to you. That you'll be the type of person that, 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 that is seen as a good person, as a righteous person. Not because of what you're doing, but because of what God is doing in you. If you abide with God and you have the heart of God, His heart will lead you to do acts of kindness, acts of love, acts of mercy. If you, if, you, if you do with God, if you're living with God and abiding in Him and doing what He tells you, you will be that, that type of person that, that does, uh, that other people know, that's a person, there's something different about them. They're a good person. My, one of the, uh, uh, one of my sister's friends growing up in high school recently was caught up in a, in a scandal and, and it turns out turns out basically he was being framed uh, <laughs> he was a scapegoat uh, for someone else who was misbehaving but this boy he grown up that we knew him he grown up living in such a life in fact at one time he'd been a priest he'd actually entered the priesthood but he decided that he wanted children and so he left the priesthood and become the and, and became a father and all of us who knew him and all of us that, that grew up with him, we knew this is not the kind of man that would do this. Because he lived the life that God called him to live. Because he lived the life, the good life, that righteousness leads, that we just knew he couldn't have done it. And in the end, it turns out he didn't. He was being framed. We know that all the law and the prophets come from love. This is Matthew 20, uh, 22, 40. Everything that's in the Old Testament, all those rules, all those commandments, all those guides, is a loving guidance of a loving Father for us to be loving people, to live with God in a life full of love. If you truly have the heart of love, you will naturally live according to God's commandments. You will naturally live a righteous life. One of my wife's favorite hymns, they'll know we are Christians by our love. So God already abides with us. And what John is telling us is that we need to abide with him. And then the, 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 to become this one family, to become this family of believers, this body of Christ, so that we can join together in that great communion of all the saints. Not just in the life to come, but here and now, in this life. Life is meant to be enjoyed, to be blessed by the God who loves you. 
Our song of reflection is Lead Me, Lord. It's number 473 in the hymnal. We'll just uh, remain, remain seated as we sing. taking the time to, and, and, and the energy to, to show us that path which will lead us into your blessing. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who set the example of how we can be the people you created us to be, to save us from our sins when we stumble and fall, and to teach us your divine word. Clear away our own way of doing things, our pride, our selfishness. Free us from those, those thorns that, that, that we fall among, that, that choke out your word and, 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 and bury us in, in fear and deep doubt. Free us so that we may see the joy of life, the beauty that you have surrounded us with. Give us the perseverance to do your will at all times to be your loving presence. We know that you are always watching out for us and watching over us. Give us the, the heart to feel your presence, to know that, 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 that your eye is upon us so that, so that we may be the people that you created us to be. The examples. We come before you with those things that are heavy on our heart and mind, those, those cares and concerns of this world, we lay them at your feet. Those that need your healing touch. <clears throat> those that are lost in confusion. Those that are worried about real physical needs. We know that this is not something imaginary. But help us to be the ones that help satisfy those needs. We thank you that your blessings far outnumber all of our troubles. Help us to see your face, to walk in your light, to live the good life, the righteous life that, that exists when, when, we, when we do your will. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Savior, and our Teacher, who taught us those words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Is there any blessings, any uh, concerns that you'd like to bring, a celebration, an anniversary, or birthday, a concern that you'd like the Body of Christ to pray over. <laughs> Man. Oh, um, I would like prayers for my niece, Jennifer LaPorte, who will be starting chemo this week. Mighty God, we uh, pray for Jennifer that uh, she starts her treatment, that uh, uh, help her to, to be healed, uh, grant wisdom to the doctors and knowledge that they may... Uh, do the course of treatments that, that they bring her back to health, bring her back into, into, into strength. Watch over and be with her. Calm her fears in this time. Let her know that you are always with her 
through, through whatever happens, uh, through the hardships and the, and the, and the, the, the pain that that, that that treatment brings, uh, we ask this in your name. We pray for, for Victor and the family that has had such a hard uh, hard uh, season, such a hard uh, year. We, we pray for the loss of his brother. Be, be with the family and comfort them. Uh, let them know your presence. Put your healing touch upon their, their souls. Give them comfort that they may know your love, that they may know that, 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 this, that this brother is, is in your hands and in your arms and, and welcome in that great mansion, in that room that you prepared for him. All this we ask in your name. We do have, a, we do have one joy that uh, one of our families, which was in quarantine because of COVID, has now recovered, and they're now out. So they, the, yesterday, yesterday was the 14th day, and they've been looking forward to, to being free to return, uh, to return back to work, and, and everyone's back and healthy, and they're, they're now a recovered family, so they're part of the herd that's protecting us from this virus, so that's a, that's a good thing. So Almighty God, we thank you for your healing touch upon Ruby and, 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 and the, the bringing her back to health and restoring the family, that they may once again enjoy the life that you have for them. We thank you for leading them through this disease and through this crisis and, uh, and, and, and restoring the, the, the no... Uh, serious uh, injury happened that no no one that, that no one died and, and they, that she now can, can rejoin all of us in, 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 in the normalcy of life. All this we ask in your name. How's Noah doing? Pray for Noah Ivy that he has a speedy recovery on several yeah, I, I, I was reading that uh, it, was, it was a miracle that he came through and he's recovering very they, well. They put over, uh, well, when he went in surgery and through the surgery, they gave him eight units of blood, but totally throughout the whole procedure, he's had 12 units of blood. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the body only holds, uh, what, eight to 12. So yeah. Was, God gave him a new start in life. You know, my understanding, he has a Sorry, it took that, but it's a good thing that he's back on the right path. Thank God, yeah. Mighty God, we thank you for 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 sparing uh, for sparing Noah, and, and, and uh, we pray that the the change of heart is is the it will bring him back to you and, and honor you and glorify you throughout his life. Be with him as, through his recovery. We thank you for 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 the miracles that you've given the given him that that, that he has uh, returned to to to, uh, to strength. Or he's returning to strength, continue his healing process, not only of his body, but also of his soul, that he may be truly one of your children and know your glory and your peace and your love. Okay, our closing hymn is Take the Name of Jesus With You. I have it as 536. Uh, I hope. <laughs> um, what? 337. 337. Well, I need to double check my numbers all over the place. I, it's also under, it also goes by the name Precious Name. I don't know whether, how it's listed in our hymnal. It's either Precious Name or Take the Name of Jesus with you. It's the same song. Okay, so let's try, let's try 536. 536? Okay, 536. <coughs> Either way, it's my fault. Let's stand and sing. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it then where you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of hell, take the name of Jesus ever as a shield from
from every stand. When temptations round you gather, read that holy name in prayer. Precious name, oh how sweet, joy of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Oh, the precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy. When his loving arms receive us, and his songs our tongues employ. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and I have a note here that my lyrics came from the Cokesbury Hymnal, and that's where the page number came from. Sorry. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Yeah. And you outside can go in peace too. <laughs>